hi fam so it's the start of a new vlog it is a saturday it's the day after my younger sister's birthday and me and the kids are heading out to take her to what seems to be an early lunch at this point because time is against us we are basically ready to head out and um just thought i'd start the vlog obviously the rest of whatever else will be happening through my phone in terms of me recording whatever it is that happens at the brunch we are going to a local woolies cafe because we realize that we actually enjoy their menu so that's where we headed off so check you out at the cafe etc but otherwise until then happy reading and thank you for joining us uh, uh, Guta, Guta, part five is crying part five is crying we are still going to cry girl <laughs> but girl we shall talk about it we will definitely talk about it i loved this discussion so much thank you so much you guys yeah thank you so much good night bye Bye, ladies. What is it? Um, did you see me the whole time? Okay, guys, so it's many, many days later. Rise. Mm -hmm. Why are you showing your tongue? And me and Iana are waiting for her brother. They came out at different times. So they were wearing clothes, normal clothes to school today. And um <laughs> and as you can see we've got new her, new her. Say new her, don't curl. <laughs> Say <Yeah. laughs> Okay, so that's the update that I have for now. I'm probably gonna just catch up with you guys when I get home. We're just chilling. Chilling like villains. Are we chilling like villains? No. What are we doing? Mm, relaxing. We're relaxing? Mm -hmm. Isn't that chilling? Mm, yeah. We're relaxing is when you close your eyes. Oh. Chilling is when you just have fun. Are we going to close our eyes? Do you want us to? No, we can't. We're in this car alone. We can't close our eyes. Okay, so we're not closing our eyes. Mm -hmm. We're just waiting. Yeah. Okay, my baby. Um, yes. Can we please have a phone? Can we have a what? Phone. Your phones? Mm -hmm. What does that have to do with being tired? You can't have your phones during the week. You know the rule. Okay. What does that have to do with being tired? Um, it's because I'm bored. Now? Mm -hmm. But your phone's at home. No. I doesn't I don't understand. Okay. Okay, check you guys when we are back home. Welcome back to my channel. <laughs> we off to Durban to eleven.
Okay, so guys, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is yeah. like a chill. Well, everyone is chilling. Oh, but, but this is also tent, sir. So. Where, yeah. where are we starting? Where is the place where we can check uh, uh, around? Yeah, born in Lendela, I was born away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let the poet speak. Pandaba, 
Hanna Munyokuza. Mampe Kulu Lala Makasi, a semateni kind of betake is talk or in talk or a kaya, a susum Maybe the fact that we are the head gets into our heads until we forget that we need the support of the neck. Mm -hmm. These newspaper articles bleed stories of wounded women. Mm -hmm. And we men have become the valley of the shadow of death. We are constantly taking away breath. It is dark and the sun's rays cannot raise our suns, nor erase our sins. The headline of this article is of an uncle who speaks with his knuckles. And the other page is of a couple where the man's fist feasts on his fiancée until her flesh is left gaping. And her body is now stitched together in stories of all that she's been through. Her cracked lips still forge a smile. She's trying to hide all of her pain. Yet the walls of this house holds a lot of secrets. And the neighbors now speak in whispers and, and claim that it is none of their business, so they remain silent. The public remains silent. We remain silent. Even the victim remains silent. Yet her eyes scream for rescue. She says, help me. Help me. Her eyes scream. For rescue. On the Sunday Times is a pastor. He alters his character. The altar still stinks of his sins. His intentions are sinister. You know that it is sacrilege to use sermons to seduce. Who knew that predators can also pray? Hey. They wear fancy suits to suit their fancy in pursuit of all these women. Daily newspapers bleed. Red, red is the color our sisters swallow. To murmur is a language taught to daughters when fathers murder mothers. Maybe martyrs are all these women we read about on the newspapers and the newspapers keep bleeding. City, city Stremeza. These newspapers keep bleeding. Let the poet speak. Every time we make a cool in your day. Oh, yeah. Good morning. 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 So we'll just be short to say thank you for coming today, for making this day as beautiful as, as it is. Um, a little bit of the history, who do you remember and myself? We moved here about two years ago from Houdin. So we are writers, all of us are writers. Um, and we found ourselves moving back here. I think the COVID just, um, yeah, gave us just a little bit of, we needed to, to move away to, I think we told ourselves that we, just, we needed to get our creativity back. Um, but we moved at different times, um, and the idea for myself was just to be here for about six months and then go back. I just needed to, 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 to get away. And I think it was the same for her. Um, next thing we know, we're bumping into each other. We're both here in Balito, and we, we're looking for. I think, I think when writers get together, the first thing that they always look for is literary activity be mm -hmm. it a book club, be it a bookstore, be it festival, whatever they can get themselves um, involved in that is literal. And we couldn't find anything in Kwadu Musa in the district. Um, if there are festivals, we are not aware of. 
Uh, but we know there's a lot of activity uh, in the TV, for example, the time of the right time is also coming in a few weeks. So we just got this idea that let's just do something for the community. Um, Ilan Book Festival really is a community event. And we've tried to incorporate the community as much as possible in designing the program. And it, it helped immense, tremendously to find ourselves here at the Tuna Museum. Mr. Fala is right. When we came here, it was just like two ladies, and then Ayanda um, joined us. And we said, yeah, we didn't even say we are writers. We didn't say that we are writers, but we didn't elaborate. We just said we are writers, and we would like to start a book festival. We would like to host it here. And I think the first two meetings, they were just starting us uh, out, out, like, who are these people? <laughs> um, and after the third meeting, they were just like, the only who is ready for you to start. And that's really how it happened. And they've been um, fantastic as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a partner. I think they are just like our equal leaders. They've given us this beautiful venue. Everything that is here is, is from the museum. And, um, so we appreciate it. And thank you for putting the trust in us. And thank you for trusting yourself as well. I did say this yesterday. Uh, because you wouldn't have been part of something that you didn't think was going to be possible. So from us, the organizers, there are other two members who unfortunately are not here who, you know, we all get excited about this, making song as well as um, Sison Zobe, um, who helped us initially um, to, to just like put this together and to think that it could, it, it could happen. So enjoy the day and enjoy this beautiful space. We love this space. Um, enjoy this beautiful space and then enjoy the conversation. Um, yeah. All right. <laughs> um, thank you so much. They are so modest. You are sowing dreams into the lives of children today. What you are doing will not be felt immediately, perhaps. Today will be a wonderful day and people will enjoy it and they will go away with amazing memories of this inaugural festival, but you will do something much larger than that. You will say to the children of this community your stories and your history and who you are as young people in Africa is valuable. It is precious. It is to be cherished. It is to be treasured. It is to be written down. It is to be told in storytelling form because your stories are important because you are important. And there's no price that we can put on that. So I thank you as the organizers of this festival, the wonderful authors who are here today that I'm very privileged to, to have been with and in the company of in the last uh, day or so, and uh, the YouTube Museum for making all of this possible. And long may it live, may it grow into something much larger um, and I look forward to a two, three, four day festival in the future. And, and, and I would like to say, for those of you who have children and who have brought them here today, thank you for what you've done for them. You've done something really important in their lives. And, and let's keep doing it for our children. Let's give them the gift of words. Let's give them the gift of their voices and remind them of how important that is. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so, so Children of Chicane, I've given you a bit of a clue as to what it's about already. Um, it is set in uh, KZN, or what was then Port Natal, the colony of Natal, and it's about a young woman who leaves India to avoid an arranged marriage. She's 14 years old, she doesn't want to marry her cousin, and so she, she, runs, she runs away, leaves her family in the Madras Presidency, what is now Chennai in India and she comes to Port Natal in the hope that she will find a life here and uh, because she's had access to a rudimentary education in India she hopes that this is the place where she will find herself get some access to education and improve her life um, and perhaps find love as well and uh, nothing quite goes as planned once she reaches the colony of Natal because it it turns out to be a very brutal place indeed. So it's her story, but it's also a story of friendship, of love, survival, um, and, and the triumph of women in particular over a very cruel system.
Sanwanani, good morning everyone. Um, my name is Noktuna Mazigugomsima and my book is titled The Daughters of Nandi and uh, it's a story of Queen Nandi, Queen Nandi Gabebe, so the mother of Queen Shan, Umama Weden, Ilem, Melekumanyama Lebomu Kalima, Unodu Meslezi Gamenzi, Ushaga, Agashai. So one of the most famous women in history, you know. Uh, so I have been fascinated by the story of Queen Nandi for a very long time, you know. Uh, she lived at a time before there was Twitter <laughs> or any kind of popular media, but we all know her name, right? And she is the mother of the Zulu nation. Mm -hmm. So that for me was the tree because in Kosushaga we know that you know he built a nation you know from different polities you know because we were all royal right we are all royal so the Kono Zulu, Kono Mazugu, Kono Mthongo and Ilembe put everybody together you know but who was behind that? Queen Nand. But where the book really begins is this supposed curse on her descendants because of how she was treated. So essentially, if I were to distill one theme, I would say the theme is love conquers all. Because it really is about one of the greatest love stories. You know, she had her heart broken and she was mad. You know, she was really, really, really angry. And she said, this has happened to me, you know, so and to my descendants, whoa. So the story is about can over 200 years can she reverse it? You know, can the power of love, um, can the can, can resilience, can gentleness overcome? Because her name is Nandi, but what we know from her praises is, you know, the antithesis of Nandi. My name is Welcome Manjali Shiva. And I'm the author of Boy on the Run, which is a memoir. Um, and it's a memoir about coming of age and also really overcoming grief. Because when I was 12, I tragically lost my mom. I was so moved by the spoken point earlier because I felt like in many ways he was talking to me and about the things that my mom has experienced. But when I was 12, I walked in on the tragic scene where my mom was shot by her boyfriend, who also shot himself. Um, and so uh, the book is about um, coming, how I came of age, how I found myself as a black gay man in South Africa, dealing with all of that. And I think the story of the femicide and women being killed is a very big South African story, unfortunately. And that's why I was propelled to write my book, because I felt like it's just, these women become hashtags, you know, justice for so-and-so and we move right along, but there isn't the weight of the story that is given to the devastating effects of what we have to live with as a result of this gender-based violence that we speak so loosely of. Um, so that's me in a nutshell. Good morning everyone, um, my name is Ustani Welanga and I'm the author of uh, the book Unlabeled. Um, Unlabeled is a book, uh, it's an LGBTQIA plus book which uh, focuses on uh, lesbians and it takes us through a, a, a story, um, a life of a female who is um, a self-proclaimed -pro uh, lesbian uh, growing up in a township uh, at a time in South Africa where being queer was still very uh, not understood. So this young lady take us, takes us through her life um, going through religious judgment, um, being judged by the society, but also this book and looks into uh, the space of the LGBTQIA plus community. So it looks at the non-acceptance 
within the community, the judgment within the community where the community doesn't accept people who come out later in life. So there is also judgment, not just outside, also in the, within the community. Good day everyone, my name is Sia Kumalo, I'm the author of this book titled You Have to Be Gay to Know God. <laughs> it's, it started all, um, it wasn't, so it was, it's now a memoir, but it started all when I, I was watching how people were reacting to some hate crimes. Now they involved femicide, they involved what, what sometimes is called corrective rape. So if everything that makes South Africa, South Africa at the moment, I'm sorry. And I, I was watching people responding to these things by saying, for an example, but isn't it a gay, to, isn't it a sin to be gay? So for an example, there'd be an incident, some people call it punitive rape, I, I should probably use that term instead. There'd be an incident of punitive rape or a hate crime, and then the comment section, which I've now learned, we don't read the comment section. <laughs> the comment section be one person after another, it's like, yeah, but it's a sin kind of say the justification for the violence we're seeing and some of the violence was extreme it was uh, creative in its brutality and you'd get people making this the point so i started writing a book saying okay um, you are believers i'm a believer too we are reading the same bible i'm reading it more some people would use the word intersectional analysis one thing this is what happened in those societies this is the context then this is the context we're facing today we can't weaponize scriptures because that's, that, that, that is using them incorrectly. My publishers read it, and they said, we're gonna help you change all of it. I agree. I agree. No, I agreed with the thinking, and so I went with it, and here it is now. Thank you. One of the biggest lessons that I learned is know what you don't know. So of course I did not know television writing. I know I'm a novelist, and so I brought on board with that finding. I brought on board. Um, I made two incredible. I actually don't credit them enough. Two incredible um, television writers, Sunny Baba and Zaba. Zaba Ah, brilliant. Stop that. Yeah. Yes. So Zaba uh, and, and um, Sunny um, workshopped the first. Pitch, you know, the first draft of the pitch um, that I would then send out to a Netflix, a showmates, and so on. Um, so I actually sent it to those two streamers only, and um, showmates came back to say, We want uh, you to pitch to us. Um, and then, so I actually did both uh, Red Ink and Critical Bastille. So I packaged both of them, put together pitch decks for both of them, sent them off to showmates. The execs at Children's called me for a meeting, a presentation, presented the thing, loved it on the spot, they like to take both of them. And that's how, that's how it Yes, girl! Like, yeah, well, when, are we, when can you expect that? So I don't know that was happening. So we're um, the development for Critical Best Table, which you worked on yeah, in Ben McMillan. Um, we started the development for Critical Best Table now, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm presenting the second, I mean, okay. 